Today on The Boost, we're gonna talk about the AB thumbnail testing and whether or not you should actually be using it. Is it hurting your views? We'll talk about it here on The Boost by vidIQ. All right, Jen, we just got a text message from one of our fans here. Let's take a look at what it says. Sup, Travis and Jen, I love you guys. Thank you for being awesome. I was wondering what you guys think of the AB thumbnail testing feature on YouTube. I'm currently using it on my new video and I'm afraid that it might be giving me less views and hurt my potential of the video going out. Should I just end it early and let it cook? It's a good question, Jen. What do we think about this? Do we let it cook? I have strong feelings about this actually, because I think this came out and we all kind of ran with it because we were so happy and so excited that I don't know if we really set guidelines for ourselves as to when to use it and when not to use it. Because I do think there is 1000% times where you should not use this. One of the things is we've been testing this on the main channel for a while, nine times out of 10, the percentages are so similar that it's like irrelevant, right? Like it's pretty irrelevant. If you go into making a video knowing in advance uh, what your thumbnail and title are gonna be, then they're probably gonna connect pretty well. And unless you're doing drastically different thumbnail styles, which by the way is kind of what A-B testing is for, Boom. then it's kind of pointless, right? Like otherwise, what's the point? It's also pointless to not have two really good thumbnails. Like A-B testing is not to have one really good thumbnail that you're like, this is awesome. And then just, you know, another thumbnail to throw in there, no matter how different they are, because you have to think about it, that thumbnail is still gonna be surface to people. And you will yeah. lose that click if it's not a good thumbnail, just because it's adding, you know, it's making the better thumbnail look better. <laughs> doesn't mean the worst option of the two is not still being shown to people and potentially losing that click because they're not going to get this video resurfaced, you know, most likely with the other thumbnail then shown. Yeah, well, this actually came up a couple of weeks ago and I had to ask Vinay Ritchie about like, what happens if the losing thumbnail, the people who did not click it, uh, will it get resurfaced? And uh, after the thumbnail is decided on the winner? And the answer is kind of no, not necessarily. Like it could, if it eventually does well, it could get resurfaced to those people who didn't click on it in the first place but it doesn't automatically get retested against those people despite the fact that the newer thumbnail might be better. So does that mean you should not use it? No, I mean, I think there's instances where you might have two really good thumbnail ideas and you're just not sure which one to go with. That's a great opportunity for it. Do you need to use it on every single video? No, and especially if you're a smaller creator, a lot of times you'll get inconclusive results because you won't have enough impressions. It takes a lot of impressions for the process to even figure out which is quote better. And the other thing is thumbnail testing doesn't end the first 48 or 72 hours after you do it. The reality is you get different people coming to your channel over the course of weeks and months. Uh, Jen, uh, speak to that. If you want to really, really get into A-B testing, then you need to have like three A-B tests like set up. You should have that initial community test set up within those first like three days. You should have it set again for when your casual audience the rest of your subscribers are seeing it within that you know the rest of the week and then a highly highly discoverable option past that time of course this means the video has to be getting views that entire time and surfacing for that to actually make sense so we're probably talking about this with um larger channels not necessarily a strategy for smaller channels because that first one probably still won't even be done but when we think about what makes a good discoverable thumbnail versus what makes a good community thumbnail and when that video is being shown to both, those thumbnails look entirely different. So if you have a thumbnail that has your face on it and then you have a thumbnail that doesn't, within those first three days, most likely the thumbnail with your face on it is gonna win because your audience knows you and they're reacting to that thumbnail. But that doesn't necessarily give us the answer that we maybe wanted for the, you know, longevity of the video if you will i love that that was that was really well explained and and again nothing is definitive just because a thumbnail works today doesn't mean it's going to work tomorrow to jen's point it doesn't mean even that the thumbnail that youtube tells you is the best one is actually the best one especially when you're thinking about the videos live on youtube uh, potentially forever the majority of people who will ever see that thumbnail are actually would maybe potentially connect more with the thumbnail you didn't end up even using, which I think is probably the case more often than not. But if you like questions like that and getting your answers from us, Jen and Travis here at The Boost, check the link in the description where you can check out the entire podcast and some other answers we've given. See you next time.